Good afternoon. <laughs> this budget hearing conducted by the Committee on Appropriation and Adjudication will now reconvene with the Guam Public Library System. I want to thank everyone for being here this afternoon. And um, I'll spare everybody the speech and just uh, let's go straight to the testimony. Will you be delivering the, pres the testimony as Pampa? Sorry. Good afternoon, Senators. Um, Mr. Chair, no um, speaker. Uh, I'm sitting in for um, our president, so I'm the acting president while he's gone. Um, I'm just here to support, and uh, we have Mr. Frankie uh, Afligui to my right, who's going to okay. give the no, testimony. Please. Because I noticed, I figured you were the acting president, so I thought you were going to be delivering the testimony. Okay, fine. Mr. Jay. Uh, half a day, Speaker Cruz and members of the Committee on Appropriations and Adjudication. Thank you for the opportunity to present the Guam Public Library System's GPLS Fiscal Year 2019 budget request. Guam Public Library System is requesting for an appropriation, appropriation level of $1,286,314 for its operation. The special fund being requested from is the Territorial Education Facilities Fund, TEFF. Of the overall amount, approximately $1,015,617 is requested to fund salaries and benefits. There are three vacant funded positions going through the recruitment process as follows. One library technician one, a library technician two, and one building custodian leader. Operation costs amount to 112495 and utilities is $158,202. Our mission statement, although GPLS has one program, it consists of five support divisions as follows. Administrative support, office management, Office policies and procedures, employees and board manual, records and files, correspondence, board minutes, equipment and supplies, and library maintenance. <coughs> Financial management, budget program evaluation and monitoring, work position, reports and replacements. Personal management, rules and regulations, payroll, lease, staffing, and affirmative action program. And grants management, Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS, and Department of Interior. Reference, in-person patron request, telephone request, selection of reference collection, recataloging and reorganization, reorganization of references, reference guide, email request, and facsimile received from on-island and off-island. Guam materials, managing vertical file holdings, establishing index and master subject heading, organizing books, reports, and legislative materials, updating vertical file holding, holding clipping of uh, substantial events in new newspaper and uh, reserved documents, manuscripts, and photographs through proper treatment and storage. Our archival material, technical processing, selection of acquisition, classification and cataloging, maintenance, library services, circulation control, library assistance, collection, library programs, extension library services, network and information system support, maintains the level at, Area Network uh, in Haganya Dedu, Agat, Barragata, Marisu, and Jonia Libraries uses the library management software Horizon Sunrise System developed by Epitech with the following models cataloging, cataloging circulation, serial reference, acquisition, PAC, and public access catalog. Archives, uh, retrieving of Guam collection documents using Alchemy, Gold, and Canon microfilm, imaging systems set up and maintenance of these databases. Maintenance, maintains patrons and staff internet and email access, responsible for maintaining an internet proxy server using Win proxy. Maintains a CD DVD server, uh, creation, cat, catching, and providing access to users on the networks on the network, maintains computer operations, jobs that are scheduled and executed on a daily basis, and off-site backup recovery systems. 
attends week training or on current and new library technologies, installs and configures new computer hardware and software. The division accomplishes its mission by serving Guam residents since 1949. Our mission is to provide free and open access to information and ideas fundamental to, dem to a democracy. The library system will protect intellectual freedom, promote literacy, encourage lifelong learning, and maintain cultural materials. To implement, implement the automation of the Guam Public Library System, to supervise the operation of the department's legal mandates, to develop an effective system of operation toward high performance standards in order to promote better and satisfactory services to the general public, maintain the authority, Executive Secretary, Guam Public Library System, Title V, Guam Code Annotated, Chapter 3, Section 3122. To ensure the effective management, regulation, and control of developments determined to be in the public interest for its continued economic welfare. The goals and objectives, management and leadership, general administration, and operation. To provide management function and leadership to to department staff with the efficient in engagement of the department staff along with the department's financial facilities and physical resources to accomplish directed and authorized programs, projects, and services. Approves, directs, and oversees the department's operations, physical, and property accountability. To see, under to, see to understand the information, education, and recreational needs of all the people of Guam in accordance with the American Library Association Library Bill of Rights, freedom to read and freedom to view statements with the limits imposed by budget and space, extend library resources into the community to assist individuals and groups with special needs, work cooperatively with other, other island libraries in providing information to the public, pursue opportunities through new technologies to deliver information more quickly and efficiently. Provide general administrative and operational functions to department's programs. Provide the department's financial resources to accomplish directed and authorized programs. Provide for facilities maintenance support. Provide personnel support and provide physical and property accountability of the department's assets. We are confident that GPLS will continue to expand its programs and services within the community given the support. Thank you again for the opportunity to present GPLS fiscal year 2019 budget request. Thank you very much um, for your testimony. I note on the first page that you stated there are three vacant funded positions going through recruitment at this time. Um, when did we start the recruitment and how far along are we in filling those positions? They were down since January 2018 at DOA HR. They were approved by BBMR. They are funded positions. They're still there. How long have those three positions been vacant? I need to check the staffing pattern. There's a one tech two and one tech one. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Well, the positions were announced in January, so they right. had to have been vacant from before that. How from, la from last year? From last 20 year? 2017, yes. From 2017? Right. In, during the fiscal year, I mean, how... how it when, was actually already going... And how have you managed to operate without those three? Very hard. That's all I can say. I also note that besides those three vacancies, um, you have a vacant director position, is that correct? It's been vacant since 2006. 2006? Not 2016. 2006. Okay. This was even before that. That's why I asked 2016 is when... No, no, 2006. It's been 2006. 
position has been vacant. I also note that there were four-year library technician positions that are vacant. Unfunded, right? Un four unfunded technical library technician ones positions. And there were four library technician two positions that were vacant. And at this point, you're only trying to fill one library technician two, is that correct? Okay. The, the two that I mentioned in, in, in the um, testimony, those are already funded positions. However, every fiscal year, when we turn in our budget request to BBMR in December or January, I do fund them. However, when it comes back, we have to meet their budget ceiling. So that's why, even though it's reflecting vacant, zero funding. I can't fund it. That was a decision made at BBMR before it was transmitted here. And what you've transmitted, what has been transmitted by the executive budget request right. is the 1.2 that you're currently asking for today. Yes, sir. And you're asking to be able to fill those three positions that the announcements have been out for. That are funded currently, yes. Currently. But you submitted those three requests since the beginning of the fiscal year. It was finally announced in January, and to date it still has not been filled. Correct. That has been on Department of Administration, not here. They're, those are funded positions, is that correct? They're funded positions, and even when I'm communicating with HR, uh, because of the budget, um, they froze all vacant positions in February. So was the salary increment. That was also frozen. <coughs> okay. In contractual services, I note in, in this budget, though it seems like a small amount, um, some things that were not in the in the previous budget, are these new items like the MS trainer for 5100, the data design, the Dell marketing for 7200, GTA and PDS? They weren't in the previous. I'm just. Are you... Okay, hold on. <coughs> for contractual services, sir? Yes. And which vendor were you mentioning? Well, does the 5100 50, for MS Trainer, well, MS the 7200 for Dell Marketing, uh, were those in the previous year? Okay, those are the required dollar amount from data processing for the MS trainer for the active directory. Oh, this is the required, these weren't in last year's budget, but now OTEC is requiring that you right. provide your share of whatever it is that they're, our that they're doing. Yeah, the government, our share. And GTA and PDS, that's also new. Is there, are, is that being? On a month to month contract, we, we have to keep uh, amending the purchase order. But there's still no, uh, the contract, you know, is going through bid or the, the process. Yes. Yeah. So on a month to month <laughs> basis, we go through. Okay, so month to month, you guys have to handle both of those. Right. All right. There's also a request for $2,000 for repairs at the Agate Barragata de Del Marizzo and Jonia Libraries. Does anybody wish to explain? Though, well, actually, we would need more money than that, but I'm trying to meet our budget ceiling. At any time, should a water, there be a water break in the building or outside, you know, 
for emergency repairs, we always need extra money so we can repair what needs to be repaired. And so how much has been spent this fiscal year to do whatever repairs that, that weren't previously authorized in, or at least asked for in the last budget? Not for this current fiscal year or 2017. You haven't, you haven't had any need for any repairs at the libraries this fiscal year? Not major repairs, like I said, broken water pipes maybe. Those are what we're looking at, critical needs right now. Okay, so this request for additional 10,000 uh, for the five libraries. It, it, if we, if it, we are given that money, sir, yes, we're, we need to use it right away. Like tiles, I believe, in Dedido again, right? Okay. I got, they're, they're popping up from the floor where you're walking, you might trip. So right now our men are just using you know, the proper glue to glue it down to the floor. We want to repair it, but we have to wait till there's money. I, I, and that's what I'm trying to get, yeah. get at right now, is, is for you to explain why those, those, what those are so right. that we can fund it. If we have the money, then we can start repairing Agat at least. And at the others, what, what other issue, what issues do you have at Zornia Marizzo or? That's the major, well, to me it's major, the tiles popping because it's a safety, you know. So I would. You're gonna to need to move that closer to yourself. I, 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 I would start with the Agat Library for the tiles, repair of tiles. Okay, and then, then how about the other libraries? We don't have that major problem or emergency repairs right now. All I'm aware of is Agat. Okay. Um. You've, there's a significant decrease in your um, su supplies and materials budget. From 2018, it was like 25,000, and now it's only 17,000. And I just want to know, what are you giving up in order to reduce that? Once again, I need I need it first to fund salaries and benefits. So we need supplies left to right at the library, but I can only appropriate so much money into that object category. So what type of supplies do you think you're, you'll be giving up if you have to meet the $17,000 cap? Okay. Um, Toilet tissue, of course, is number one. Hand soap, because the patrons will complain if there's no soap. Paper towels. Um, we're very, we're limiting our office supplies also. You know, like Xerox papers, pens. We're really trying to economize and cut down. But we can only do so much in a fiscal year. What are the hours of the branches? Are they still the same? Will they remain the same in 2019? As yeah, in 2018? Unless we get a lot more employees in, then right now they're open to the public. Uh, Nine o'clock to 5.30, I have a schedule for the libraries. Yeah, I think I saw it, it's online also. Right, right? Like, like for, for Agat, they're open Tuesdays open to the public from 9 to 5.30. Of course, the employees are there from 9 to 6, but the additional half hours for them to straighten whatever needs to be straightened back before closing. All right. We need, I hate to say this, more employees, we really do. Why is that? Because right now, Terry only has nine library technicians to account the supervisor, there'll be 10. We have five branches, main library in Agania, that's six libraries to men. And there's only 10 library technicians. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I'm just trying to understand, uh, you, you, you're, you folks are probably going to be the, the, the smallest budget on all Gulf Guam. 
and you're servicing, you've got six branches, correct? Six libraries. Six sir. libraries? Yes. And you're basically servicing the whole island? Yes, sir. What is the ideal budget and staffing that you need? I think that's what we want to hear, not, not what you're showing us, because what you're showing us is you're just trying to stay open, and that's not, that's not profitable to the children of Guam or the people of Guam. If that's the case, you might as well close. And I think you can all agree to that, okay? It, it's got to be run properly, man, accordingly. And, I mean, i like to ask you, you know, because everywhere, everywhere in the world, a lot of the libraries even have uh, internet service. They even have a small cafeteria so that the kids, when they're hungry, they can buy something. When parents go and they want to read, they can, they can buy something to eat. Because the items you've mentioned, ma'am, you're talking about personal hygiene. That's something the school automatically has to get. And if you're, if you're having problems getting that money, I'm just wondering, what is, the, what, is, what is downtown doing to help you? Because you're only a million dollars. You're not even a little bit of a, one school. Every school in Guam needs minimum of $10 million. You're, you're not even at, at that edge yet. And I'm just concerned is that when, when we went to the public hearing for the nomination for the board, we were very concerned about how we can help you. And I've asked this, you know, I met you, Bill. I met every one of you, and I've asked, what do you need? Where's your letters telling us what you need so we can understand your needs? Because in Dededu, I go by that library, and I, heart, I it don't even look like it's open. And, and that worries me because that, that was the largest village on the island. And, that, and I'd like to see how we can help you. I'm not saying that the, the, the legislature has a lot of money, but there's going to be an agency that is padded just a little bit too much. They were going to, I, I would be the first one to say we need to give the library some money because I'm wondering, if, is, is the bookmobile still running? No. Is there a bookmobile or no more? Can you answer that? Yes, yes, please. You do have a bookmobile? Okay, Matson communicated with Terry Kennemer and myself. I had a phone call yesterday from, um, I forgot the lady's name, anyway. They recently purchased a brand new bus for us. It's an 80 passenger bus, so that's pretty big, right? But it's going to be retrofitted. You know, put in bookshelves, whatever else. Okay, but, and that's going to be donated to the library? Donated to the library, yes, sir. And where's that going to go? What, 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 what is the... The routes? Ma'am, ma basically what I'm asking to do is you need to sell us how we can help you. Because I'm, I, I don't know, are these your employees? Are these the staff of the library in the back? No. Yes. I, I want to be able to turn... And say that if I go to the library today, I can walk in and honestly say I walked in the library. Okay? The gum, it's a Gumbagam facility. It's a Gumbagam operation. And I just hate to see it where anybody on island needs to go do research. They should be able to walk in there. They should be able to walk in there like they walk into UG or GC's library and see. Ex you should have identically what they have. Five, you only have five villages, right? Other than the Ghana, mm -hmm. five branches. I totally agree. And um, I think Miss Sandra um, is being um, on guard because she's following a ceiling that has been um, provided for her or suggested that she stay within. And that's with the, but I think she, um, she's going to speak freely right now and well, tell you well, well, all. Well, well, just understand, I, I'm the oversight chair of the library, and I've been asking this. I've been asking so I can hold a hearing if I need to, but nobody's reaching out. Now we're at the budget. Okay, ma'am. Now I'm just going to tell you point blank. I, I really don't care about your ceiling. I want to know what you need so we can figure out what we can help you. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I need. Okay, thank you. And we need to get it in writing after we're done, okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Senator. 
I like sitting in for the president. <laughs> I think I'm going to walk home. Okay, senators, what the library really needs to properly man a branch library. At least two library technicians at all times, and that's for safety reasons, and that's even written in our board manual. And Terry can agree with me on that. Currently, whatever branch library is open during the week, it is manned by one library technician, and for safety reasons, I also send a male custodian not only to clean the area throughout the day, but also to assist the library technician on duty at that branch. That's how it's, we've been working it out at the library. It's really hard. Should a library technician call in sick? Remember, there's only nine library technicians now, not counting Terry. If that one library technician, let's say from Dededu branch, calls in sick, Terry does not have a replacement or a substitute to send up to Dededo to man the operations. So basically, I know my budget ceiling, but we need more employees to properly man. And if they want it to open more days a week, we need staff for that. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at your budget, and like the speaker identified, you have a director position. You have a, gosh, there's what, one, two, five different positions out there. Uh, I'm just going to ask that you submit <laughs> what you should have. You already submitted a budget. Yes, we did. I'm asking you as the oversight chair, submit to me what is what you should have. I'm, and I'm looking at, at what you have in the budget that are not funded. And it's amazing how from 2006, your director wasn't funded. Except. Uh, unfortunately, you have a different president. Whoever the previous presidents were didn't pay attention to the library. It's, it's evident. 2006 uh, is 12 years ago. Come on, that's, that's too much. Sir, actually, through, uh, a, through a statute, uh-huh. There is a statute authorizing the recruitment of a territorial librarian and one computer system analyst. Understood. I see that in your budget, but it's zero right. funds. Right, but they never release the funds from BBMR. Okay. Never just, did. Just, just submit to my office. How soon do you well, want it? I, I, I needed that last week, but that's okay. As soon as you can put it together, okay? All I'm saying is you I've asked this since the day we did the hearings for all the nominees. And it's already now June. All I'm saying is submit it to me, then I'll try to figure out a way. Because you already have a budget you submit, okay? The million dollars? The we'll one. work on trying to find a way to find money somewhere to give you to help you. What time are you normally at your office in the morning? Ma'am, don't be concerned about what time I'm there. Just get me the budget. I need the documents. I can okay? give it to you. I can send somebody to pick it up right now. Do it's it. what I submitted in December to BBMR that they shut down. Then send it to us. Let's well, take a look at it. And the, the, my colleagues would love to see it. we got to figure out what's there and what money is there, okay? Then I'll, I'll you. provide you with the one I submitted, Please. which I fully funded everything. Okay. And identify when you write it up uh, why you need it for safety reasons. The, the, there's a mechanism. There's a way to write that, okay? Just write it accordingly. And yeah, I mean, it is actually written in the board manual. For safety reasons, the former territorial librarian always sent two library technicians. Okay, but just, just, just submit that, okay? I'll Tomorrow morning, I'll give it to you, sir. Okay, I'll be calling Bill to remind him to get it to me. Okay, thank you. You don't call me up, Bill. Yeah. Hi. <clears throat> Good afternoon, senators. Thank you. Um, I'm a board member, so is uh, Chris and uh, Mary. We have been uh, religiously meeting once a month. And uh, if we could, we probably would tr like to meet more often. And uh, we might probably have to do that. We know what state the library is in, from Dededu all the way down to Mariso. And we were, well, 
the board members were looking at it at an approach, how can we make this place an interesting place where people want to go to and actually spend time with it. So we were thinking, and if you remember the, uh, uh, the hearing that was here, uh, I remember uh, saying the word third place. You know, it's not first, second, third place. First place is the home, second place is school. The third place that we should really establish is the, uh, the library. And with the libraries that I've been through like around the world, boy, they have archives and everything like that. But in addition to that, they have um, coffee, s snack stands, computer things where they can, the kids can come and make it interesting. Also a Wi-Fi, um, anything they can think of under the sun, it's there. And when, when we meet in the monthly board meeting, we try to find ways come up with ideas to make it so interesting and also functional. Not only interesting, but functional so that the kids can actually use this, even as much as coming up with programs. And Mr. Chris uh, Shoenge is really, uh, he's also a librarian at uh, JFK, right? And he's doing no, uh, no research on, you know, all the different apps or programs that we need to probably incorporate in the library so that kids can make it attractive to come there. And one of the things also that's really we're trying to push and we're, you know, in time, we're really trying to get money for this is the bookmobile. And I've seen this done in the States, especially when my grand, uh, grandkids are at in Boise, Idaho. Computers, they go to the school. You know, they, and in fact, I was just talking to uh, Mr. Uh, Johnny Sablon, that we, and also Mr. Chris and the board members, let's put computers, or maybe about 60 computers in a book uh, uh, mobile and go to wherever we need to go. We'll provide that with printers, uh, of course, all the laptops. If it means going to the school, we'll go to the school and provide it, set it up for the kids so that they can use that. Now, as far as the money is concerned, we, I know, Mr. Chris, you've been looking into that, and uh, we're trying to get a, a good figure so that when we do come, you know, we speak with integrity and then with research and saying that, okay, this is how much we need. Sandy has been really, um, really trying to run the entire library system with bare bones. And, you know, we, of course, you already, you already heard that uh, we need more than that. But... With that, her running the library, uh, as far as the budget concerned, and the board members trying to meet so that we can all come, come to a certain time and place and say, this is what the budget that we actually need to run this uh, library here in Guam that will be functional and interesting for, and, you know, for all the students, all the people here in Guam. Until then, well, I, then I say, well, you know, we'll come to you with a big budget that probably you might <laughs> not fund, but at least, you know, but that is our thing right now. We're meeting once a month. We need to come up with more time. We need to, more time so we can give you a good uh, number to say what we actually need. Because we, I believe, the board members, we're really trying to turn this uh, 180 degrees, the, 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 the use uh, of the library, you know. Yeah. Um, and I wish it could be sooner, uh, uh, but we do meet religiously once a month, and I wish we could do more. And if we did more, well, I think we would accomplish a lot more. But, you know, of course, we all have our own schedules that we have to do. Uh, Chris, did you do any research on that uh, um, bookmobile? Can you please pass it on to me? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and the Senators. My name is uh, Chris Sirangan. I'm the librarian for John F. Kennedy High School. I've been there about eight years. I also member of the board, as you heard a few minutes ago. I also help uh, librarian teachers to become librarians. I would like to recognize the folks who are sitting at the back. They all want to become a librarian and serve the community here. And the, if you really sometime, if you guys have time to just walk into the library, and see the situation there. I also, in the meantime, I want to commend all the library staff. They have done an outstanding job, uh, considering the fact that they, they, with a little, little money that they get. And they have done outstanding job. However, 
we are about 15 years behind the, the mainland libraries. Our OPAC, which is called Online Public Access Catalog, if you log in today, right now, and see, look for a book, you will not be able to get that help. It's out of order. And unfortunately, our people cannot get that fixed. It's been there, down there for a while because the process of getting fixed is not an easy task. Uh, these folks are able to do a lot of things, but those are too technical. So if they want to get that fixed, they have to contact their DOA office and there somebody will be uh, contacting the office which is located in Singapore. It's not easy to uh, contact them because it, it's expensive to call and I, I'm not sure if they have ever contacted. When I went through the process, it is not an easy thing to get it done instantly. Whereas the GDOE libraries, we just installed a system three years ago. And they are instantly, if there is a problem, they can call 800 numbers and can be fixed instantly. But our library is about 15 years behind. It's so embarrassing that when you go there, when a public wants to get something done, uh, it cannot be done. Uh, right, uh, a month ago, right after the meeting, a uh, board meeting, we came out outside of the uh, library and there was a single mother with two kids trying to get into the library, get the work done. But by the time she came out of work, the library is closed. And I remember uh, Brother Bill, she heard the story frustrated and Saturday the library just is recently we started opening and it's it's not a good thing to you know we have five libraries open only once a week and you know we could we could open a nice library in, in Tamaning area and the northern part but we are truly behind 15 years behind and we are not technologically uh, par with the mainland it, it is can you imagine with 15 years, no librarians, professional librarians in the library. That's a long time. And we have let it go uh, since 2006. There's no librarian, professional librarian in our library. And we just opened a, a year ago, we opened a nice, beautiful children's library. They could use a nice children's librarian. There's no children's librarian. You know, we have a nice, beautiful collection, but the children's library would like to work with the parents in the kind of books they need, work one-to-one, -one, and we don't have that. No library at all. So I have a master's degree in library science. I know what needs to be done there, and it's, it's I mean, our community deserves a better service from our library. And because of the funding, we are, we, are, we are in a handicapped situation. We are, Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> we are trying every way we can to prioritize, you know, the, I guess, the ideas and also how the money is going to be used or spent uh, with you know more more bang for our buck, and <clears throat> right now that's really in the forefront, and uh, hopefully not spending as much money as the bookmobile, and with that that really can uh, uh, go out through the island, and um, I'm I'm not sure what that is going to cost or entail, but I'm very sure that can we can really uh, be winners with that bookmobile, and then traveling to all the schools, but. Again, we're meeting and we're trying to solidify this so that when we come with you with a budget, you know, we can be able to defend each item that we, we are requesting. You know. And I apologize uh, for not, uh, as a board member, not coming up with that budget any sooner because you know, we're trying to uh, do this um, correctly and you know, uh, uh, in a, uh, methodically uh, so that when we do uh, request for it, you know, like I mentioned, we can support this. Uh, as far as money, I wish that uh, you know, we have an infinite amount, but we don't. And when the time comes, we will uh, submit uh, the, the money. 
I mean, as far as the, the budget, was what we actually need to run the, uh, the library. May I speak? Here I go again. Okay, since 2006, the librarian, the director, she is a librarian, resigned. Okay, from 2006 to current, I am proud to say that with little money every year that's budgeted, that comes our direction, we are bringing in thousands of dollars in federal grants, 100% funded. Mr. Chris was talking about the new children's library through Department of Interior, which the employees, we don't have a grant writer, we don't have professional librarians on board, but we bring in thousands of dollars every fiscal year through federal grants. Department of Interior grant for the new building, million five hundred eighty six thousand now who's not going to be proud to say i work at guam public library system with no professional librarians no grant writers but the staff from admin unit they work wonders i'm proud to be from gpls if only we had more money to open up branches at least twice a week with two, li uh, two library technicians manning the, the, the building, then we're gonna be fine. But for now, we're doing the best we can with the limited money coming in. If it weren't for the federal funds, you won't find computers in the library. You won't find new desks. Because Golf Guam, we're not even budgeted enough to even buy a folding table. Look at what happened to our supply for this for next fiscal year. Federal funds is coming in, people, and those are people that are not librarians. No grant writers, but I'm proud to be from that department. Thank you very much, and uh, I think you and your staff, the limited staff that you have, should be commended for all that you've been able to do over the last 12 years. Um, and as your chairman, oversight chair says, um, we're now aware of it, but the presentation that was sent down by the, by the executive budget request was just that. And um, as you said, some people are a little hesitant to, to speak out, but there are classified employees. Those of you that are unclassified may have second thoughts about saying what was said, but I'm glad that yeah, not only the unclassified, but the board members have now spoken up. Uh, did you have any questions? Sam? I was just looking at your, um, your contractual budget, and I noticed that in your other branches, like in Agate and da da, -da I didn't see any um, internet service <laughs> Providers, so is this under Haganya that you pay for it and then they distribute it from right. there? Right, it's funded from our main library. Okay, and um, is this at a discounted rate? Because it's sometimes like you can come into an MOU or MOA with some of the internet service providers, and some agencies like GTA provides internet gratis. Discounts, no, but recently we're back on the USAC. Was that USAC? E rate, I'm sorry. Okay, and then the Circe Dynex. This is for your for your library. Is that in some way? Uh, is that up the software, the software is updated program. and because it's a huge part of your budget. So you go yes, through periodic. Yes, we need without that. There's no way to process books. Everything. Okay, and is this in relation to the OPAC that was being discussed? The online public access catalog. Is, do you, is there some kind yeah, of connection between the softwares? That's all with Cersei. Okay. okay. The programs, All right. software programs. All right, thank you. I just want to thank you for everything that you've been doing. Um, I've had the opportun opportunity to spend some time and to read uh, children's stories to the children over the weekend at the Hagatnir branch. So 
uh, the programs that you do implement, you do reach out to the community and you do, um, you do represent a large part of the, the population as far as services when it, uh, for higher education and knowledge. And so, uh, no, if we, there's a way that we can help you grow uh, to also reach out to the children in, in the other villages and the branches, they need that support as well. So thank you for all that you're doing. We really appreciate it. We work hard, and senators, I was under oath. I had to speak the tr truth, right? Yes. <laughs> Yes, you're under, yes. Under oath, okay. Under oath. And our program coordinator, Frankie Aflagui, right there. He's the one actually that collaborates, and also the admin staff, should he need help. But he's trying, we're trying. I'll give you our dream budget tomorrow morning, yes, sir. I think it's a practical budget because you've been neglected since 2006, no? Oh, it's yes, because, I mean, I'm not going to ask budget. for something that I did not need. I mean, we need it. Thank you, Give Mr. it to you tomorrow morning, sir, under oath. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, did I, did somebody wish to test? Did you wish to? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Leslie Avila. Um, I'm a student at the University of Guam, and I did want to provide some testimony regarding uh, this issue here about the Guam Public Library System. Um, interestingly, for the most part, two, uh, the two men from the board had spoken much of what I needed to say. I mean, the, the papers that are presented to you say library technician here and library technician there, but the bottom line is that a library needs a librarian to be run. And I would say a lot of the budget would be needed to hire a librarian. Now, interestingly, um, my classmates here, I wanted to add, um, interestingly, the opportunities to be a librarian on Guam is close to non-existent. I mean, we are students of library science, but even in the verbiage of our paperwork, um, we're technically not librarians. After we finish this program, we're still teachers. I mean, we can't even be labeled as a librarian after this. And even before um, looking into becoming a librarian, the University of Guam has no program at all to be a librarian. And there are interested people who want to participate in being part of the library system. And yet, there's no real support in order for that to happen. A lot of us uh, in the back over there, we ended up looking online and to be a librarian, you have to have a master's degree. I mean, as what Mr. Sheringen had said, uh, he has a master's degree. And then uh, from there, like I said, how can one be a librarian if this state, if you will, doesn't necessarily support it as much? So I'm hoping that with the budget, it will be uh, spent in a way where it will create that program and produce librarians. Um, another reason for the budget, um, advertisement. Advertisement of the library. I mean, a lot of businesses, they put into their budget advertisements and the library has so much to offer uh, when it comes to internet access, a lot of information how to get a job, um, and even just information about our general region. Um, so much of that is not being presented and I would suspect the reason for that is because there's not enough manpower to pay for that. Uh, and lastly, uh, in terms of me being a patron uh, myself, technology always changes. The budget is always needed to, to upgrade. Um, there's so much in technology that the library can offer. I mean, we have microfiche now, we have projectors and whatnot in digital media, media, and all of that takes money. So um, that's my spiel. Thank you very much for hearing me out. Thank you very much, Ms. Avila, and um, thank you very much to the library science students that have shown um, um, here this afternoon. Was there anything else you wish to add? Yeah, yes, in answer to 
Oh, to her. somebody else wants to speak. Go ahead. Oh. Hi, um, my name is Christine Keto. Um, I'm also a student of library science. Um, so I wrote some things down uh, just based off what I'm hearing. Uh, and then some of the things like maybe I see happening in our community. So hopefully this helps with answering a question where you said, what do you want from us? So hopefully this will add some insight to what I think we need also in the system. Um, as a community, we need to encourage literacy not only in our schools, but also in our library system. We need to fill the librarian positions, including all the library tech positions uh, in all our libraries, not only in our Ganya library, but even in our village libraries. It's very limited in the amount of time it's opened. Um, I haven't visited the library in many years, but my last recent visit, I will say maybe is two, three years ago. Um, after the bookmobile shut down, I took my kids and I said, let's check out the Dedito Library because that's where we reside. Uh, I walked in and there were no books. Um, there were books on the table, but there were no shelves with books. Um, tables were empty, not a lot of equipment in the library. Um, and I was told it was only open for uh, maybe four hours of that day that we went. So I never returned to the library after that. Um, so hopefully we can open the, the village libraries more than, I guess, the one day on the schedule that it's open. Uh, eight hours in a week, it's summer. Where do, where do we want our kids to be this summer? Do we want them to be indoors, outdoors? Do we want them to visit our library? So how do we make it improved? Hopefully these guys have the answers, but I'm going to make some some suggestions. Um, we need to allocate money to fund the resources available to the community for the use of the youth and the adult members that we hope will visit our libraries, whether it's the Aganya Library or whether it's in our village libraries. Um, I heard that we have federal funding and grants, therefore we also need additional technology in our village um, libraries that include laptops, desktops. If we get iPads, then lucky us. Okay, to support our village youth as a place where they can research for assignments or maybe even just to expand their knowledge for leisure. We, need to, we also need an additional maintenance budget to service these technologies. Why do we buy them and then there's no budget for, for maintenance of them? Um, we need subscriptions to a plethora of magazines that is made available to the public. So why do we only provide magazine, uh, why do we only have newspapers based on my recent visit to the Aganya Library? Why don't we have other magazines that the youth can read, that the public can read? Maybe a subscription to um, Youth Today, Psychology Today. Um, hopefully these guys know what we need, but I'm just suggesting that. Um, we need to refurbish and provide funding for the bookmobile to become active in the community because there are youth in our villages who don't have a library in their specific villages. And the bookmobile affords the opportunity for books to be brought to them. This is most beneficial during the days when the kids are on break, summer, Christmas, Easter break. The libraries are closed in our school, so where will kids get books? Um, I see people when I walk into bestseller, uh, sometimes they sit on the ground just reading random books. Maybe they can't afford it, so having the library system more improved allows the kids to walk in and sit on the floor and read in the library. I'm really new to this knowledge of the library and the library system. Uh, therefore, I hope that what I mentioned is considered in support of funding our public library. I look forward to better and greater things to happen in our libraries because knowledge is growing. Therefore, our library should also be growing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anybody else? If, uh, yes. Okay, to answer a few of their questions. Number one, it's true for you to be a librarian, you have to go off island to get your degree. Now, library don't handle that. That should be a matter with, I guess, University of Guam to offer the course, not Guam Public Library System. Number two, I wonder which library, if you don't mind, that there's no table or whatever. What library was that? She said it was the Dededo one. Oh, I'm sorry to disagree with the lady, but Marissa retired with, Gough, with our department. She was handling Dededo branch. As far as I know, since I came in in 2004, when federal funds once again started coming into the building. Though 
every year it's limited, but we make sure that there's computer system on the desk at whichever branch that may be open. She retired from the Dedo branch, so she knows what's in the building. We have magazines, we have books, tables, chairs. Okay. Um, my dream budget, trust me, it had about four to five librarian positions that I've been trying to fund every fiscal year. You'll see it tomorrow morning, sir. Because we do need professional librarians on board. We do. But if there's no money to fund it, then we cannot have a professional librarian on board. And the federal funds, it's whatever that's written, the grant write-up, if, if it's for, for computers or to upgrade whatever, that's all that we can buy within whatever money given on a fiscal year. We can't uh, hire a librarian with that money because that's not what the grant was written for. But going back to the librarians, I believe it's up to the senators, the legislature, but for you to become a librarian, that's the University of Guam that should set up that course, I guess, instead of going off island. But every branch should have good light. Workstations, not only that, but to include laptop. In our federal grant, to answer one of their, their questions, I am not allowed to buy laptop, I mean, um, iPads or whatever other, you know, it has to be either desktop or, or a laptop or tablets. I am not authorized. So the public can demand that the library should have tablets or iPads. I'm sorry, it's not authorized in the grants. It's either laptop or workstation, that's it. So I'm also limited, you know, in the grants. If the ladies would go on our online, on our website, we're, uh, we also link, or Rowena is the one actually that links, like Department of Administration. You know, you go in there if you're looking for a job, because that's not our area of responsibility to announce positions. But the links are there for the different departments. You know, if you want to apply at the AG's office, click on that link and it'll tell you all the job openings. So it's not our responsibility to announce that one of the senators wants to recruit, I don't know, secretary or something. And also the magazines, if they go on our website, go online and EBSCO. And right now we used to pay five to 6,000 a year but through Mr. Chris, it's free, because uh, through DOE, whatever he may have done, but if they click on that link for EBSCO, thousands and thousands of magazines free online that they don't have to pay, and we don't have to pay for their services. So our grants are very specific. I would love to buy tablets for the kids to loan out maybe, but we can't. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the purpose of public library is to help the public. Uh, when it comes to tax filing, finding jobs, these are some of the services generally the public library offers. Unfortunately, we, do, we are not in a position to do that kind of services. Now, if you go to the mainland, they do just about everything, vacant job hunting and just about anything. They go to public court, the library, and take care of that kind of things. Uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, she came here and uh, shared some of the concerns. That's one of the you know, feedbacks. There are thousands of thousands of people out in the community don't want to say anything. But time to time, I do hear the concern the, the need of a better library with uh, 
with all the technology, the current technologies. Um, to get one mobile lab to, com to take to the community with the mobile, um, book mobile, it, co it will cost about $30,000 with 30 more, um, laptops. And if you go take them to some of the villages, and there are, you know, 50% of our students, when they come to school, they don't have computers, they don't have the technology, they cannot afford. You know, if you, if you, if I, if you go to JFK in the morning, 6.30, there are kids out in the door trying to get into the library, get the work done before the school starts. And that's because they, they don't have computers, they don't have the technology. This is the time that the public library can play a role going to the community, providing that kind of services. We are not doing it. And we don't have the capacity to do that. Thank you very much. Again, I want to thank you and your board and all the employees at the public library for what they've done um, with what meager resources have been provided to them. So thank you very much. And uh, we will a recess this until tomorrow morning when we meet with DOE. Okay. We also want to uh, thank the committee and um, Senator St. Augustine. Um, want to thank you for your um, future assistance with this this department, our agency, or division, however which way they're going. Um, they need a lot of help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're in recess until tomorrow morning, 9.30, DOE.